everyone. In today's episode, I'd like to cover one of the questions that I was asked in my previous Facebook Live session that I wasn't able to answer. And it's a question that has been asked several times in the past. So I realized that it's an important question and therefore I decided to look into the question deeper and find out what's the appropriate answer to that. The question came from Vishnu Vardhan Reddy and he asked, why do people get attracted so fast to negative media rather than the true concerns? In other, in other forms, people have asked me why people just believe negative news so much easier than they believe positive news. So in looking into this, I came across an article uh, written on the website Psychology Today. And um, that was the same question that was posed. Why does bad news travel faster than good news? Why do people like watching the negative news? And why does negativity sell on media? The answer is actually quite simple according to this article. Our brain, it turns out, has a greater sensitivity to negative news or unpleasant news. And the reason being that our you know, way of survival from time immemorial was that whenever there was danger to survive, our brain had to be wired so that we would be more sensitive to danger, more sensitive to something unpleasant, more sensitive to something that could cause us pain so that we could react faster and hopefully save ourselves. So there was a study that was made in the University of Ohio where the researchers showed people different pictures. The first set of pictures were pictures that showed positive responses like a Ferrari or a diamond ring or a holiday. Then the second set of pictures were pictures of unpleasant things like maybe a dead cat or an accident, things that elicited a negative response. And then the third set of pictures were pictures of neutral things like a plate a mobile phone and it turns out in this study that the greatest electrical activity in the brain occurred when people were shown pictures of the negative uh, images the accident the dead cat and so forth and so on so this just proved that our brain is naturally wired for uh, negativity now, how does this apply to us? No, re no wonder why when people are told something negative between something positive or when we read a negative article on the, on the website as opposed to a positive article on the website, we tend to believe the negative article over the positive article. Now, this also applies to our relationships. It's easier for us to remember things that people said or did that hurt us rather than things that people said or did that made us feel better. Interestingly, we also remember more of the things that we, the good that we've done to others than the bad that we've done to others, right? So, in our business, what is the solution then to this? Number one, we cannot avoid negative news. That's just the way, the, way, the way things are. In the information age, where everything is online, and where not everything online is true, in this time uh, you know, where there's so much fake news proliferating on the internet, while at the same time, it's just so much easier for people to just say anything and state their opinions online. How do we battle that overwhelming you know, body or that growing body of negativity online so that our voice, our message of changing lives, our message of ours is a great business, our message of rhythm 
resonates more than this seemingly huge mountain of negativity. There's actually a solution to that, again, uh, based on this research done by this team in the University of Chicago. It turns out that for every negative article or every negative word or in every negative act that's done, you need five positives to neutralize the impact of that negative thing. Which means what? If you don't want people to remember the negative stuff, then we need to give them five times more of the positive stuff. So how does that apply to negative news? As an upline, as an entrepreneur, we need to ask ourselves, how much of the positive news are we purposely, intentionally putting out there? Now, of course, you know, the company can bring out their press release, the company can post articles online, and all of those obviously will help. But if it's a friend of yours, it's a neighbor of yours, it's somebody that you are engaging, you know, for our business, or somebody who you want to purchase the product, you know, how do you do that? Give them positive stories, right? Give them positive news about the product. Give them your, show them your results. The more positive things you show them, the more positive things you expose them to, the less impact the negativity they will encounter will have. Nobody can avoid the negativity. It's just all out there. Whether it's true or false, it's there. What we can control is the amount of positive words positive news that we put out there and it doesn't have to be great big positive news it can be something as simple as hey you know what in a conversation you can say I was just so excited because I heard you know a friend of mine got really felt better when he started using my product and then leave it at that don't oversell don't try to hype up just plant seeds every opportunity you can of positivity there is no such thing as an overdose of positivity so you can never overdo that you can never outdo that however you can exaggerate it which is also not good be genuine be sincere be positive that's what we do to counteract the negative news same thing with our relationships we are in a relationship business. And like it or not, anytime two people are together for a period of time, there's bound to be words that are said, that are negatively taken, or things that we do that might be negatively taken as well. We can't avoid it. We're all perfectly imperfect. Even the best of marriages will have both positive and negative interactions. So how do you maintain healthy, you know, strong relationships in your team amidst all of this negativity that might be happening? The misunderstandings, you know, the, um, you know, the potential for conflict and so forth and so forth. Same thing. Use a five is to one ratio for every one negative word that's spoken or ne one negative action that's done crowd it out and put back five positive words if i said something to my daughter that hurt her feelings it doesn't matter whether i intended to say that or not what's important what matters is that she got hurt and by acknowledging that my words hurt somebody, I can then begin to intentionally start counteracting that negativity by saying positive things and affirming her and giving her, you know, um, you know, affirming words. That's the same also with our actions. We're bound to hurt people by our actions. We're bound to disappoint them, maybe not show up, be late, and so forth and so on. So when we do that, let's acknowledge that. Let's acknowledge the impact that has. And because we value our relationships with our team, then let's be mindful in counteracting the negativity or the negative actions we've done with positive actions. 
they don't need to be big, grand, positive gestures. In fact, small, positive, repetitive acts have a greater impact than grand gestures. So there you go, um, Vishnu. Okay, I hope that answered your question and the questions of our, uh, you know, other uh, family members across the world. When it comes to negativity, yes, we all have a negativity bias, which is an inclination, a greater sensitivity to anything negative. However, it is not the end of the world. We can always counteract that negativity that negativity bias by intentionally sowing, planting seeds of positivity, positive words, positive actions, and most importantly, positive results. Nothing beats results. Nothing will kill negativity faster than positive results. So get your results there and get your results, you know, um, posted and get people to know about your positive results. Here's to us building to last by being better together. Till the next episode, God bless you all.